So we're going to ask you to turn to the book of Job chapter 19. And we will be reading just one verse. <laughs> verse 28. Job chapter 19 and verse 28. Everybody have it? Say amen. Okay. It says, but ye should say, why persecute we him, seeing that the root of the matter is found in me. Just concentrate on that phrase right there. The root of the matter. Amen. And I'm going to entitle this, getting to the root of the matter. Getting to the root of the matter. Amen. How many are you going to help me preach by worshiping God and just loving God and just saying, Lord, use my pastor to speak to me today. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here with these precious saints and these people have come to worship your name. And I just pray that your spirit will speak through your word today to every heart. I pray that every need will continue to be met in our lives and no one will leave here confused as to your word and what you have desired for us to know. And I just pray that revelation and understanding will come as the word goes forth. I pray that in the name of Jesus, the gifts of the Spirit will operate and that signs and wonders will follow us as believers as the need is in this place. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you may be seated. Getting to the root of the matter. Amen. I'm going to speak to you on a subject today that I hope will cause every one of us here today to see the importance of being deeply grounded in the Word of God. Amen. Let me just say this. If your service to God is all on the surface, then you're headed for trouble. Come on, somebody. It has to be deeply rooted in God's truth or basically we're just wasting our time here. Are you hearing me, church? What do we come to church for? To know about God. How do we know about God? We hear his word. Amen? Amen. Praise God. A.W. Tozar, a great preacher and a prolific writer of a century ago, made an observation. He said that our spiritual fathers were gravely concerned with the root of the matter while their present-day descendants seem concerned only with the fruit of the matter. Are you hear, hearing me today? He said, we read, their, we read their biographies and we celebrate the fruit of the forefathers, but we ignore the root out of which the fruit sprang. Hallelujah. Now follow me closely now. The wise man Solomon said in Proverbs, the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The fruit doesn't yield roots. It has to be the root that will yield the fruit. Amen. We all know that the feeling of excitement during the times of revival. How many of you like revivals? We are lifted up to such an emotional high and, and, and we don't want it to stop. Amen? Like the times when Brother Jason Sisko would come and or Brother John Arcovio, amen, would come and minister to us. The power of God will move so much in those services so greatly that we just wanted it to go on, to keep on going. Amen. But that was for a while. And for so many times, brothers and sisters here today, 
It is only for a brief while for a lot of us. Are you hearing me? You see, fruit appears, and all too soon it disappears. It seems like we're on an emotional roller coaster. Because there can be no lasting fruit, hear me now, if you don't have an adequate root system. It doesn't matter how the fruit looks at the time. Or how much fruit is on the tree. If it doesn't have an adequate root system brothers. In other words. If you don't have a knowledge of the word of God. If you're only apostolic. If you're a, only a Christian. And you don't have a root system. Then your fruit will wither away. And it will not last. You find a family, you find a church, you find a nation, or you find an individual, amen, that cannot, that, that cannot be destroyed if he has an adequate root system. Nothing can save a family or a nation or an individual whose root system is all dried up. You can't do anything for them. Or an individual can for that matter and so long in Christianity for so long all we've been concerned with is the fruit when we should me be more concerned with the roots hallelujah because it's easy for the fruit to dry up if the roots don't grow deep are you hearing me any tree can produce a fruit for a season. Hallelujah. But if the roots don't go deep, it will never produce the next season. Hallelujah. A tree can weather almost any storm if that main tap root and all the roots are deeply embedded. Don't look at that yet. He's coming pretty soon. The average family, let me just say this, in America today is rootless. You've heard many people say, let us get to the root of the matter. Huh? They don't know that they're quoting from the Bible. It's in the scripture that I just read to you. Amen. In our text. So when we say let's get root to them, get to the root of the matter, what are we saying? We're saying stop beating around the bush and let's get right to the point. Amen. Let's cut through all the fat and get down to what it's all about. That's what we're talking about. The root, brothers and sisters, is what gives life to that plant or to the tree. And it's the roots that we have deeply embedded in the word of God that is going to keep us alive and allow us to grow strong in the faith, the roots. No wonder Paul said when he looked around and saw the evil days coming, we were going to have to be rooted if we were going to make it into the end, he said. Amen? Let me give you some statements that he made concerning being rooted. And one statement he said, we must be rooted and grounded in the faith. In another statement he said, you are rooted and you are built up. Notice the emphasis here. Paul is making is that we must be rooted and grounded in the knowledge of God's word. To where we will have an understanding of it as well. Amen. Do you have an understanding of why you're here today? Why you're planted in this church today? Why you're a Holy Ghost tongue-talking believer? Do you have an understanding of that? Come on. Because if you're not grounded in this belief, you might be gone tomorrow. 
That's how serious this is. Now, I don't claim to be an expert in botany. That's plant life. I looked it up in the dictionary. Uh, but in studying for this message, I found a few things about roots to make my point here today, okay? And there are four things that I found that a root does. Are you ready? The first thing I want to mention that a root does that it, that, that, is that the root fixes. Say it fixes. Most of you have seen a large oak tree. Two of them. Or a big sequoia. Have you heard those? Some of those are being threatened right now over there with a fire. Huh? But can you imagine how big that tree is? Let me just say those roots are at least three times deeper than that tree you see up there. How do you think it's lasted 2,000 years? Huh? There's been lightning hitting those trees. Storms. They've probably gone through fires before. And somehow or another, because that root system is adequate that tree has survived and has weathered the storm are you hearing me Amen. hallelujah so just like the song says that we used to sing many years ago just like the tree planted by the what water I shall not be moved because the root of that tree goes deep in the ground. That's why it's there to stay. That's why it cannot be moved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You see, the deep roots is what fixes the tree. And when a tree is injured, it will receive nourishment from the roots to fix itself. And when our roots are deeply embedded in God's word, brothers and sisters, the family stays, the church stays, the nation stays, and you will stay when your roots are deeply in the truth of God's word. Nobody's going to move you. Hallelujah. Don't you want that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when injury comes to your life from someone who might have mistreated you and let you down, when the devil hits you with everything he got because your root system is deep, brother, you will begin to heal yourself like that big oak tree. That's why it's so important of an issue to get to the root of the matter. Hallelujah. Are you with me today? Amen. Hey man, how about this group? Are you with me? You over here. Where's Brother Joe? I want to make sure he's attentive. Huh? All right. Number two. The root will not only fix itself, but the root also receives nourishment botanists tell us that a root in the ground actually reaches out and looks for food and water to feed that tree that's how important the root system is brothers it goes out looking for food and it pushes its way through the rocks and through all the dirt that we cannot see in order to find the nourishment what's it doing it's trying to stay alive. Amen? Get all the nourishment it can. In the same sense, brothers and sisters, we also have to receive the nourishment from God's word every day if we expect to stay alive. Peter 2.2 2 tells us, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may what? Grow. Look at this small tree here. 
I want this tree to grow. Oh, I'll get to that later. How are you going to grow? Huh? By just coming here and listening to the word? And going home and say, I got my fill for the week, for the month, for whatever? All right, let me go on here. Number three. Another thing the root system does is it feeds and waters the whole tree. Not only does it feed itself, but it also feeds the fruit that grows on it. Are you hearing me? So the quality of that fruit, brother, depends on what kind of nourishment that that root gets. If you're not doing everything you can to nourish your soul with the word of God, the fruit you produce will be will, will not be adequate for your survival. Hallelujah. It will be small and weak, hardly causing any effect in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Then the fourth thing that you will find that the root system does is that it quickens. In other words, it makes alive, revives, it quickens. As the seasons change, so does the tree. Amen? Springtime comes, then the fall comes, and then the winter and the fruit and all the leaves fall off of the tree. And from all appearances, it looks like that tree has no life. Have you seen that before in certain trees? Beautiful in the springtime. Blossoms. And you go back there in winter and they look ugly. Huh? But the root system continues to grow even though we're in that season of winter. And it's doing its job. We just don't see it. And when the season changes, that tree is quickened again. And the leaves and the fruit reappear and gives life to the tree one more time. Hallelujah. We also go through seasons. Amen. Amen. Seasons. Wasn't that wonderful series we heard on seasons? We go through seasons where it seems that life is being drawn out of us. Trouble seems to be everywhere. Trials are so hard to bear. But because our roots are deeply embedded in the word of God, we cannot be moved. Jesus said in St. John 6, it's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits us nothing. The words that I speak, he said, they are spirit and they are life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When the word of God came to you one day and gave you life, gave, and gave you reason for hope in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, look at this little tree. I would like to show you an illustration. As I said, this tree is a citrus tree. Now, I forgot if it was a lemon or an orange. I know it's not a grapefruit. But it's a tree that my mother-in-law gave me maybe two or three years ago. And look at it. If it weren't for me, it would be dead because my son just passes it by and just, I water it. At least I do that. But it needs more than that. Can't you see that? <laughs> this little lemon tree. Oh, well, brother, I'm getting to that right there. <laughs> it's small compared to the size that it should be, brother Curtis. Now, I can keep this tree in this small plot and limit its growth by just keeping it in there. I've done that for three years, and look. <laughs> Amen. And if the roots start growing out, I just clip them away. 
Where else are they going to go? They're going to die anyway. Huh? So when they start growing, I'm controlling the root system. I said, I'm controlling the root system. You're controlling your root system. Are you listening to me right now? And by doing that, this tree will never reach its potential. It will never grow to the size that it should grow or produce the fruit that it should bear. By keeping it right there. I probably would have had oranges by now. If I would have took, prop, took proper nourishment and care for it. What am I trying to tell you? We better get to the root of the matter here today. You see, the majority of all the Christians in our churches today, or most Christians, are like that tree right there. My God, help me, Jesus. They're not lively, fruit-bearing Christians that they should be because their root system is weak and their growth is limited. What I have come here to tell you today, brothers and sisters, is you better quit clipping your roots. You better get into the word of God and allow your roots to grow deep. You can't make it any other way. You gotta let those roots grow deep. My God, help me, Jesus. Where are you at right now? Huh? How deep are your roots in this truth right now? If you do not know the word of God for yourself, and you do not have a personal intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the root of the matter. And you are like this little tree that has limited growth. No good for anybody's use. If you're depending on the pastor to teach you everything, if you're depending on any time you hear from God when your pastor opens your mouth, there you are right there. That's the kind of voice this, this tree would have. Where's the fruit? Huh? Oh my God. If the only time you know God is at church, there you are. Huh? Oh, I'm going to have a Holy Ghost time. You got to hear the word. Did you get the preaching last Sunday? It was great. Well, what are you doing on the other six days of the week? Huh? What are you doing? If the only time you read your Bible is in church, there you are right there. But if you're going to grow, brother, to become something great in God, you got to get, amen, a knowledge and an understanding, and you got to get a root system. I said a deep root system that's going to allow you to grow. This is one of the most important messages you will ever hear me preach. We are dealing with eternal matters here today. Are you hearing me, church? We are dealing with how you're going to make it to heaven. Oh my God. Praise God while I drink some water. That's what my buddy Romolo used to do.
My God. Let me tell you something. Many of you are tourists in this world. When you should be pilgrims in this world. Some of you are getting too comfortable, in other words. You know what, tourists? I've been wanting to go to Hawaii lately, but when I go out there, I'm not thinking of all, you know. I'm thinking of relaxing, drinking pina coladas, virgin, of course. <laughs> Sitting out there relaxing. I'm a tourist. Huh? Getting too comfortable. But that's not what we should be. We should be pilgrims. You know this ain't your home. I said, you know this ain't your home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up way beyond the blue. You remember that song, you old timers? <clears throat> Don't put your roots in this world. Put your roots down on the word of God and on an eternal dwelling place that the Lord has prepared for you in heaven. Hallelujah. In Matthew 13, 1 and through 8, and in Mark chapter 4, it deals with a parable of the sower in those two chapters. In this parable, Jesus describes how the word is received in four soils. One was where it fell on the wayside and it did not even penetrate the soil. So obviously see the roots didn't have a chance to grow. So what happened before it could take root, the birds came and, gave, and got it, ate it up. The second was on sh uh, shallow soil. And the Bible says that the sun came up and it withered the roots away. Why? Because there was no depth in that root. Are you hearing me now? And the third illustration, it fell among thorny vines. And because, brothers, it didn't have a deep root system, it got choked out. Now, the fourth one had a good root system. And it grew. And it was the one that produced a hundredfold. Can you believe, brother, that, the, that only one out of four that was planted, only one out of four that started as a Christian, only one out of four became a fruit-bearing tree. That means that three of those that were supposed to be planted and to take root did not even make it. My God, help us understand this, church. Help us understand this. God is speaking to us here. Let me tell you something. If you only got church membership, If you only got a title as a Christian, but you don't have a deep root system, let me tell you something. I caution you. You better rethink your position right now with Jesus Christ. Somehow within our churches, we got the idea that if we correct the plant, it will fix the root. Never will that happen. Listen, because there, because the problem in the churches today is not a leaf problem. It's not even a fruit problem. It's a root problem. Until we fix the root, brothers and sisters, we will never get the fruit fixed. Never. 
That's why we can preach the word blue in the face. Brother, please, please don't do that. Please don't go there. Please do and then, oh, I ain't going to Calvary Chapel. Forget this. They let me do whatever I want over there. Huh. No pun intended. My God, it got quiet there. Until we fix the fruit, we're never going to fix the fruit. Those of you that are letting this world mess with your mind, I caution you. You better get into the word of God like you never have before and get a good root system. Oh, yes. Many of the sins that were only common in the world are creeping their way more and more into the church and we are letting it happen. Why do you think that couples in our churches can't seem to overcome their problems that they're facing in their marriages and end up divorcing or backsliding? They don't have a strong enough root system. They are like this plant right here. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Why do you think that many of our young people are losing their virginity at a young age and giving themselves over to an alternate lifestyle? They don't have a strong root system. It's time to get to the root of the matter. I'm sorry, folks. It's time to get to the root of the matter. Things aren't going to change until we get serious about our walk with God and start following this Bible the way God intended us to follow it. It can be your way. It can be my way. It has to be God's way. Pretty soon now. We're going to see who's who in this church. God has already spoken to me about things I need to change and straighten out in my life. And he's also spoken to me about the things I need to straighten out in this congregation concerning truth and holiness. If our root system is going to be strong, it has to be founded on truth and and holiness. Come on. Holiness. Yeah, holiness. Holiness in the way we act. Holiness in the way we talk. Holiness in the way we dress. Holiness in what we hear. Holiness in what we see. Holiness unto the Lord. Our God is holy. In the word of God, it tells us in Hebrews 12, 14, and we only stop right there when we read it. But I want to read a few more verses. Hebrews 12, 14 through 16. Jesus said it can't be any other, any other way or we're not going to see the Lord. So you better pay attention if you want to see the Lord. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And that's where we stop. <sighs> no man shall see the Lord, okay? Looking diligently, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. You can fail the grace of God if you don't catch what I'm saying. Lest any root of bitterness, uh oh oh my God. Spring up trouble you. And thereby many are defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. And it goes on to tell you. You see in these verses what can happen if we are Try, or we are not striving brothers to keep this word in truth and in holiness. Amen. We see what can happen. Hallelujah. Bitterness, fornication, 
profanity and all kinds of sins start to make their way into our homes and to our churches. We got to live holy, separated from this world. I don't want those carnal, lustful spirits coming in here. My God. That's why it's my duty as your pastor to sound the alarm and lead you back to the place where you need to be in God and help you develop a strong root system. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not going to whitewash it. I'm going to tell you like it is. If you have a difference in opinion, well, come to me and talk to me about it. Don't just say, I'm out of here. I knew he was a wacko. Come on. Many of you have gone a little bit too careless in your walk with God. Where you're too immodest. Exposing yourself the way you shouldn't. Doing things you shouldn't. And God wants to correct that. I said God wants to correct that. Many of you are doing things and going places you shouldn't go. And God wants to change all of that. Or he will withdraw himself from you, brother. Listen to what I'm saying. And he won't have faith, and you won't have favor in your life anymore. And eventually you're gonna die spiritually if you don't heed what I'm saying. Listen to me. You're not just any run of the mill people, you're special to God. All of you. You're special to God. You're God's chosen people. He called you to live a separate life and different from this world. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 through 11 tells us, but you are a chosen. Say, I'm chosen. Shout it, I'm chosen. I'm a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness and to his marvelous light, which in time past you were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers again and pilgrims, abstain, abstain, abstain from fleshly lust which war against your soul. For as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of your life, because as it is written, be holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. Be not deceived, God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that's what he is going to reap. If he sows to the flesh of his flesh, he's going to reap corruption. Stand with me.